Hello and welcome to Magnathia Build All Worlds. This is a Burrows and Badgers build. Yeah, this is the Red Wall build part three. Three, part three. Part three of the Red Wall stroke Mauve Wall build. Uh, a huge abbey for the uh, really cool skirmish tabletop game Burrows and Badgers by Oath Sworn Miniatures. Traditionally, right now, I would do a bit about Burrows and Badgers. I'd tell you what a really cool game it is. I'd tell you about the really cool figures. I'd tell you about how much fun I had playing it. It's the best game I've played forever. You know, the best game since sliced bread. I made all these models for it. Yada, yada, yada. You're probably bored with me going on about it. But I know it works. Because the number of people I know who have since joined the Facebook group bought the games, bought the miniatures, and are now painting furiously and making models that are going to be playing B&B &B as soon as this Covid thing is over, that number is increasing all the time. So, um, if you want to play games of B&B &B using figures like this, or like this, and playing B&B &B on scenery like this, or maybe even on this, well, actually, to play on this, you'll probably have to go to Black Dragon Miniatures in Hinkley in Leicestershire, because that's where this model is going to end up. But if you want to play on any of that, any of that other stuff, then uh, you need to go to oathsworldminiatures.co.uk. You need to buy the toys, play the game, and all that kind of thing. I promise you, you won't regret it. Having said that, uh, this model is a large two foot by three foot model in three one foot by two foot sections. It's mostly made from XPS foam. So hopefully there's a whole bunch of foam builders who are watching this uh, and are either sitting there getting inspiration or sitting there going, oh, you don't want to do it like that. And if you're the case, that's the case, then you need to tell me about that in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and then you'll see other builds with foam as well. This uh, model is going to be entirely suitable for gothic horror gamers and um, 18th century, 17th century gamers, English Civil War players, 12th century gamers, I don't know. Um, it will work perfectly well for Napoleonic games, anything pretty much in Northwest Europe. I'm deliberately leaving iconography off the main model so it can be anything you like. So this model, although I'm making it essentially for B&B, &B, I also try and make models that are going to be able to be reused over and over again in other circumstances. I'm really hoping that a Black Dragon miniatures are going to be able to use this model for other things as well. So if you don't play B&B &B yet, you will, you will, you know it makes sense. But if you don't play B&B &B at the moment, then I think there's still an awful lot that this model has got to offer. So, this then is part three of this build. I've got to confess, it's taken me a lot longer than I thought it was going to. It is absolutely huge, um, but I'm really quite enjoying getting my teeth into this. At the end of part two, we had got this far. This is where, hang on a minute, let's have a closer look. At the end of part two, we got this far. The main build is complete. We've got three separate one foot by two foot sections. This bit in the middle is the main abbey. Then we have the abbot's house and a, a gate tower here, and we're going up with a formal garden in this section. And then over here, we have the refectory and some cells for the monks and a kitchen over the back, and this is gonna end up with a vegetable garden as well. So three pieces that go together. I can take that one out and put these two together and that will also make quite a nice piece of scenery in its own right as well so again this model is being made for flexibility if you want to see the construction of this model go back and watch parts one and two um, if you come to this late you may well have done uh, that's fine but yeah, that means you're not a subscriber of mine uh, and I'd appreciate A if you click subscribe and B go and watch parts one and two the whole rest of this will make an awful lot more sense if you have seen those two already and we're ready to go on part three, then this is what we've got coming up. Roofs. Roofs. This episode is mostly going to be about roofs, making roofs, putting tiles on roofs. Oh. Um, the uh, abbey itself on the original design, uh, if you go back to uh, video one, you'll see the original design. And the original design, there's a tower that comes out of the centre of the roof. I've got to build that on columns. Um, I haven't started that at all. I'm hoping that's going to take up quite a lot of the roof space, means less tiling. Um, I'm going to tile the roofs of the rest of these buildings. Traditionally, uh, my favourite tiling method is making individual cardboard tiles out of cereal boxes and sticking them normally onto mounting board. Um, I like that kind of tile. But 
For this, I thought it would be interesting if I do a bit of an experiment. So this video is also going to include a kind of mini Magathia Builder of Worlds review of some War Bases laser cut tile strips. Only regular tile strips. I've bought some others for some other modelling projects to see how we go. So I'm going to be using those ex exclusively on the Abbey itself and on the buildings over here on this other section. And we'll see what we think of those when I have cut them out, stuck them on and painted them. I'm hoping it's going to speed up the whole process. Um, so uh, I'm not going to tell you any more about that until we actually get onto the roofing section. So, like I said, in this video then, roofs, tower, hopefully might even get onto doors um, and the, the, the garden details. But the most important thing right now is to get the actual final structures finished so I can do my last part of this which will be all about painting and detailing. So if you like tiling roofs this is the channel to be watching for the next little while. If you're not that into tiling roofs this is the channel to be watching for the next little while because hopefully I'm going to be able to save you some time with tiling roofs. If you're not into making roofs for your models because you only make ruins and they're much better off without roofs you're probably a very wise person. Anyway let's crack on with this week's continuation of the uh, red wall stroke mauve wall abbey build. It's over here. You need to check this bit out. I think I'm going to start with this tower in the middle of the abbey. Until I've done that I can't work out how the rest of the roof works. So Good luck, here we go, chin chin, tally ho, roof tiles, 11 o'clock. Alright, you're going to have to um, forgive the handheld nature of this bit here, here we go. But uh, right, this bit is causing me a headache, this is the, the columns in the middle of the abbey. Look. So when you go in you'll be able to look in there, there'll be columns in there, which is cool. And this is the base of the tower, which is fine. And the tower itself is going to be two levels, four inch walls going up, which is fine, but I've got to have a way up there now. It's just impossible to build in this space for this figure range a practical set of stairs for all the figures, because some of the figures on 50 millimeter bases, so a set of stairs would have to be 10 millimeter 10 centimeters wide so that ain't gonna work um however if you've ever been in medieval churches you might have seen some of the staircases and they are to get up to towers and things absolutely tiny so i've decided i'm gonna put a tower a set of stairs in this corner over here down here that I won't be accessible to models they're gonna be solid so it's gonna have one wall here and I'm going to have another one sealed off. I'm kind of cheating, really, because I'm not going to be putting in any stairs. So that's going to go in there. I'm going to have another wall there. I'm going to have a door at the bottom, door at the top. And then a wooden platform run across here and out to where the main tower is. I think that's going to be my best solution. That will work, then, in the model. This tower is going to be removable for, to get hands inside the actual building. I'm going to see what that looks like. I'm hoping that's not going to look too hideous. Huh. Remains to be seen. Okay, so most of the doors on this model are going to be made from balsa wood. In fact, so much so they're going to make up part of a balsa wood workshop video that I'm going to produce separately. Um, but for this tower, um, because I'm not cutting anything out until it's going to be solid, I'm going to draw in balsa, uh, draw in the doors. So this is the one at the base of the tower, and I'm going to draw another one in up here, slightly smaller. Um, at the top of the tower where the, the uh, platform is going to come out from. So this is literally just free handed in with uh, a biro drawn on there, wooden effects and the rest of it. Fortunately I don't have to do any more scribing of brickwork because the inside of the abbey is all plaster so we've got the rough texture on the styrene and now I'm just drawing doors on which does take away a bit of the effort because I don't have to draw stones all over this set of stairs. Okay, so this is looking really cool. I'm really happy with this. Look, there's the, the tower. That's where the stairs are. That's where the entrance into the tower is. The only problem is, is I've forgotten, because I'm an idiot, is the fact the roof is going to be going here. Um, which means it intercepts there. Which means 
That ain't gonna work. Cobblers. Really don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I might have to drop this stone out here and have a staircase start down here and come up into the tower. It's gonna look a bit weird. But, oh, balls. Oh, I'm going to bed. It's the problem solving of these things that apparently I'm supposed to enjoy. I tell myself all the time I really love the problem solving of these models. Uh, right now, though, this tower is causing me a right bloody headache. Go oh, well. Tomorrow is another day. Oh, of course, I could turn the steps around so they come out of the corner here and go straight up there. But I can't decide if that would just be too weird having the entrance of the tower over the altar and things. And you know what, it's a fantasy model, who cares? I'm gonna come out here and go over there and then up. That could work. That would certainly solve my roof problem, which at the moment is causing me a definite headache. Yes, I've got to get a floor low under this door here, but higher than this window here. So the floor's got to sit here and go under that door. Oh, well, that's going to be wood, so that's not too bad. It'll be a freestanding balsa wood structure that will stick to the tower, and it will be separate to. The pillars and room here, tower room, because that's all going to lift out all in one go. Oh, let's try that out. Okay, first step then, uh, we're using thick mounting board as the roof. So I'm sticking it on with Gorilla Wood Glue. On this end section, this bit isn't going to be removable. That's going to be on permanent like. So we're trying it here, we're going to try the tiles on that. Now I've got to work out how on earth I'm going to make a roof for the rest of all of this. Hmm. Right, so here we have cut out the uh, mountain board roof for the chapel. Whoop, there it goes, slid off the other side. Now all I've got to do is figure out a solution for being able to take it on and keep it off. Take it off, keep it on. Uh, a bit of me thinks I'll attach it to the tower and then you take the tower out and the roof comes off. But that might be a bit odd. The other option is to make some beams with the same profile as the roof line from XPS foam, which will then sit and hold the whole thing in shape, which means we had to pop it on and off, which I think is probably my best bet. Um, and I'll run some XPS foam along the length of it as well here underneath to make sure it stays in shape. And then we're gonna tile it. Let's see what that does. Okay, so if this is a bit dark, I'm um, in the living room at my mother's house for reasons, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of dark in here, it's not great. So, my plan then, I'm going to make beams to go under the roof. The roof is not going to be attached to the tower, the tower will be separate, it will slot over the top of the tower. So, I've cut some XPS foams 12 inches wide because that's the width of the building, and what I'm going to do is on this first one. Rather than try to measure accurately in that kind of thing, I'm taking measurements off the building. So I'm placing this XPS here, and I'm going to draw up to the apex down the other side. I'm going to make the beam about half an inch thick, maybe a little less, so it doesn't hang over any of this window here. Um, so I'm going to draw that in and I'll cut that out and then I'll make another and another. So I'll, my aim is to have four triangular beams that I'll be able to stick the roof to um, and then I'll make some long beams that will go underneath the cardboard to give the roof a bit of structure. Hopefully that then it's, they'll slip over the top of the tower and the tower should be able to stay intact. The tower is not going to be stuck into the model. Um, I want it to be able to take out so you can get absolute maximum access 
to this part of the model when gameplay is going on. Um, so, uh, but I want it to be able to yeah, drop in and drop out. So that's the plan. Let's make some roof beams. Now, I'm not worried too much about the aesthetics of this in the same kind of way as I normally would. I am going to do a quick bit of rolling with my trusty tin foil ball. I'm going to roll the whole mat, the whole piece of XPS, both sides, all over because it's going to end up making four roof beams. The trick with the roof beam is it's got to be thick enough at the apex here not to crack and break, which I'm going to have to be careful with. Um, they're not too deep to ruin looking in through any of the windows especially as this first beam is going to be right near the window alright so there's my triangle cut out I can't have a triangle because it's going to ruin everything so I'm going to draw in Roughly what I think a beam ought to be. I'm not measuring, just doing it by eye. Not that much. It can't be too thin here because I don't want it to snap. Which I'm running a great risk of doing anyway. Let's just offer it up to the model and see what it looks like. Right. There's the front of the Abbey. There is that. I could probably afford it to be a little bit deeper. The problem is, is that these will overhang the walls too much. Eh? That will probably do. So I need to make four of these. So we're um, doing a bit of an experiment with this model. For the roofs, several people suggested that I try wall bases, laser cut, roof tiles. Um, there we go, here's the set. I've, I've bought loads. Um, these are the regular the roof tiles, which I'm going to cut out and use on the roof of some of these models to see if A speeds it up and B what it really looks like. I bought these regular roof tiles. I've also bought this kind of called scaly roundy any ones now I bought these because I quite fancy seeing how they work out on the Lake Town project I reckon they'll be pretty good I also ordered some pantile ones and although you know the regular side of things are right pantiles are 3d and these aren't so I don't know how well these are gonna look we're gonna give it a go so I'm gonna play on the the uh, on red wall with these laser cut roof tiles in strips they're going to lay on and stick on you open up the packet you get this amazing waft of burnt paper cardboard my first impression is they're pretty thin thinner than the cardboard I'd normally use for making tiles it's probably more realistic uh, it's quite neat so we'll, we'll um, see how they work out I'm going to peel off the strips, cut them out, fit them, and we'll see what the end result is. It's kind of like a complete blind test. I had a pump, we'll see what we've got to see, it's safe for ourselves. Right, well, making pretty good progress now. Um, all of this side of the roof, tiled, and um, all of this side of the roof. It certainly has sped up the whole process. And uh, the tiles are kind of like small, nice, nice and detailed. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm really going to be able to tell how good these tiles are until I've actually painted it there, mind you. So we, we'll keep going. So I've got to do this side and this side and do the ridge. And then that, hurrah, is um, all of the main roof of the main uh, abbey. But it's not necessarily, I've got, uh, not necessarily all the roofs. I've got the roofs on the... Um, cells and the refectory in the kitchen to do yet which I'll probably be doing the same tiles 
apart from the fact that I've nearly run out of tiles, I've had to order some more. But it's been quite a good experiment, so um, I'm going to keep going and finish this off. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got a little bit of that in over here to do too. But I've got loads and loads and loads of spare bits I've cut off, so that's going to be absolutely fine. Let's crack on. <sighs> Glue. Plenty of glue, plenty of glue over this side. I've got to admit, this bit is going to be like watching glue dry. I shouldn't bother watching it, are you? I'll kind of like skip this bit and uh, I'm going to skip this bit and we'll see it next when it's finished. Okay then, here we go. This is the uh, roof, completely tiled, both sides with the war basis standard tiles strips, laser cut ones. Um, I've got to say, actually, at the minute, I'm really quite pleased with how it looks. Uh, it's pretty cool. It fits nicely around the tower. The tower's got to be finished off with another floor, at least um, uh, a kind of viewing platform with, with uh, embattments of some kind on the top. But the roof itself looks quite nice. You can run your hand over it, there is certainly a certain amount of texture. Did it speed me up? Almost certainly. Um, although, if I'd been making this, the tiles that I would have been doing would have been much larger than this. But sticking strips on is pretty quick. Uh, and the only thing you need to do is kind of like cut them to different lengths so you get the tiles overlaying each other properly. And they are probably a more realistic size, to be quite honest. So, I might be a fan. We'll have to wait until uh, I've painted them, really, to be quite honest, to give you a full kind of verdict. Right, I've still got to tile this tiny bit of roof here over the top of where the rose window's going to go in the end of the model. Um, but I'm nearly done. What else do I need to do to this model to get it to the point where I'm ready to paint it? Uh, the other things I've really got to do, uh, I've got to put cardboard caps on top of all of these pillars to finish them off and make them look a bit nicer. I've got to sand around all the, the tiles in the yard and we've got to make this roof over here we've got to make this roof on the top got to finish that off and probably put doors into all the bits that should have doors uh, but we're, we're very very nearly there now the much biggest job is finally done yay go me Woo um so uh, yeah nearly finished there uh, now what i've got to do is put a roof on the refectory the kitchen and the cells which is pretty tricky because one of the problems that i've now got this week is i use so many tile strips on this main roof i don't think i've got enough to tile the other buildings and i've had to order some more right uh at this point i reckon it's time for bed i'll catch you a lot later keep watching we're nearly there Okay, next job then is to tile this roof, which is going to be over the rose window at the back of the abbey. Um, this is going to be pretty straightforward, and I'm just going to be using all the offcuts of the strips of tile that I used that I got from tiling the main part of the roof. So um, this shouldn't take very long, and is effectively because I paid for all of that. This bit's free. Uh, so here we go. Let's find some glue and some tile strips and get cracking. Now, I'm not filming this at home for reasons. Um, I'm elsewhere. Uh, the problem with that is the fact that that means I've had to bring everything with me to do this bit of filming. I want to make the tower to go on top of the abbey. And the problem is, is these are the only bits of uh, styrene I've got left with me. So I'm going to have to be very careful. Fortunately, this width here is the width of the tower. So if I'm cunning, I'm going to be able to cut one and a half inch strips out, which is going to make the top part of the tower. So I still might be okay. I'm not going to crenellate it. It's going to be a flat top wall. But then 
It's an abbey, so it's fine. It doesn't need to have crenellations. It's not a fortification. Um, so I'm going to give it a go. And as long as I can get bits out of this and this, and some out of this, it might be all right. The floor is going to be made from balsa wood, so that's okay. And then I'm going to have offcuts to be able to stick to it to hold it all in place. Um, I can see what I can come up with. Wish me luck. This might not work. I have actually managed to get all the roof pieces I need cut out of that and wedgie bits to hold it all in place. Unfortunately, what I haven't done is put any brickwork on it and in some cases I haven't done the tin foil trick which I'm going to need to do which is now going to be bloody fiddly because they're all individual pieces. But I didn't know I was going to be able to do it so I need to finish uh, here. This is all still completely smooth and I need the tin foil rubbing over that and I've got to go over the top. And then I've got to do brickwork. I'm describing back to drawing picking bricks. Uh, but I think the um, the tower inside the abbey the tower inside the abbey is going to be covered in plaster but exposed it needs to be stonework so I'm going to draw a line around here and I'm going to draw in stonework on the top here as well um, but we're nearly there we're nearly there then all I've got to do is um, trim off these end tiles cap off these pillars at the front uh, and then sand it but that's going to be next time Oh, and then do something about this offensive door lintel, which is wrong. Um, <laughs> and the same on this side too. Didn't think about that when I drew those, and actually that lintel there doesn't work at all. Um, you probably can't see that, which is probably a good thing, because it's quite offensive to me and somebody on my, on my community page. They'll just bloody drop out. That lintel needs to go all the way across there. Hell's bells. Anyway. Keep going with the roof. Let's go and find some tin foil. No, that's the recording, isn't it? You fucking arsehole. Right, okay, so <coughs> I drew all my planks, and um, now what I've done is I've got both bits of wood together and I've drawn in all of uh, a load of grain and I've drawn uh, perpendicular lines across here to show the individual planks. Zoom in on that, look. 
and I've, I've used my biro to make nail marks in around at the end of every plank here. And they're probably way over the top from the size of nails that these guys would actually be using, but it really helps from a painting point of view, you know. Um, it means when you're painting over it, dry brushing or whatever else, that, that thing will kind of show out, really help sell the wooden planking kind of things. Um, this hasn't got uh, a trapdoor, it needs a trapdoor I'm going to put on it, but I'm going to stick it on the top. The characters are going to go just from the, the floor below with a ladder up to a trapdoor and uh, this makes quite a nice rooftop for the tower on the Abbey. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, so um, I had sat and cut out capping stones to go on all of the model on these grey pillars on the model which are about or just under kind of like a square, an inch square. Um, I've used mountain board just to make these capstones. These are a, an inch and a quarter large and I thought what I'd do is I'd make them this big and then I would make uh, another one to go on top of that that was kind of like three quarters of an inch. And I did this all the way around. There we go. I did that. I spent ages chamfering off all the edges freehand with a, a, a scalpel. They look absolutely brilliant. And then I put them on the model. And I decided it looked a bit pants. So I decided to get rid of the inch and a quarter capstones. And I'm just going to go with the three quarter inch capstones all the way around. That'll work nicely. So what I need to do now is I need to get my Gorilla wood glue uh, and we're going to glue the top of each one of these pillars. Going to put glue on and um, we're going to let that mostly go off because this stuff is better if you let it mostly go off. I'll probably add glue to the base of each of the capstones as well. Going all the way to the other side of this model. There are six on this part of the model. There are eight on the central part and seven on the uh, uh, Bishop's house. <laughs> now, normally uh, I would probably use my finger to spread PVA glue. There we go, that one there. Uh, there we are. But um, I have now got this absolutely fantastic set of glue spreading uh, um, tools. They are convenient inch and a quarter bits of cardboard, and I'm going to use those with the, the nice chamfered edge to spread the glue across the top of each one of these pillars. Look at that, you get a nice even spread with this purpose-made tool. Fantastic, look at that, that's great. I've got probably at least two dozen of these so they're going to last me a little while. Spread them all out there and then I'm going to put that model to one side to let the glue go off a little uh, before I stick on the capstones. Um, I'm going to spread some glue on, um, what, six capstones for this model and on the rest as well there, that way we'll get a better bond. Right, so glue going on a capstone there. I need another five. So using my brand new glue spreading device, look at that. And when that one gets worn out, um, I've got a bunch more to use. Two. I'm not going to bore you with the rest. I'm going to stick them all on there. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to make a trap door to go on the tower roof. And I'm going to do that with a pre-cut trapdoor template which is one and a quarter inch square mounting board good that huh and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my mounting board uh, and i'm going to uh, apply some glue to the back of it like that you see nice uh, i'm going to take a um purpose-made glue spreader here we go there we are, and I'm going to spread my glue out nicely, nicely, and I'm going to take then uh, what we got here. This is 0.8 millimeter thick of balsa wood, and I'm going to apply my trapdoor template to the balsa wood like that. Thus, and I'm going to take sharp knife, trim that off. Uh, 0 0.8 mil balsa wood cuts really nicely, so that shouldn't be much of a problem. There we go. Take that away. All right. Now, that's the template used effectively. There we 
we are. Now the next job, uh, while I'm sitting here, I've got it on the template. I'm just going to use the card template around the back. We can see that quite nicely there. I'm going to cut off any excess balsa. Like this. Handy little card template that. Um, you know, I've got a pack of them. They're quite good. Um, and then I'm turning this over. And I'm now, on the tower itself, I use the ruler to draw straight lines because it's kind of full-on planking and it's an expensive building. But I'm just going to freehand little uh, planks on this trap door. Um, they're going to be smaller planks than up on the, the roof itself. Here we go. We're getting that coming in there. So I'm going to freehand those in onto the door. Exactly the same method I did uh, for the tower. There we are. Uh, five little planks. Um, and again, I'm going to have the odd extra short plank. I'm going to put nail holes in all of these because they're all held together underneath or whatever. The nail holes just add that level of interest when you're painting they're not realistic sizes but that's fine I'm now taking some of the three millimeter balsa wood that I used earlier uh, for the uh, planks themselves and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut strip that I'm guessing that is about three or four mils maybe actually five mils probably Roughly cut that. I might need two of those. So I'm going to take then take my door, lay it on, and what I'm doing is I'm deliberately laying it against the grain so it's kind of easy to see. I'm going to take some, uh, in this case, I'm going to use, I'm going to root around noisily over the other side of the room. Sticky cardboard to bolsterwood now, so I'm just going to use all purpose adhesive. I'm going to put clear glue on the back of the cardboard template, the convenient template we've got there. Very handy. I'm placing this against the grain of the main planks, like that, several of them. And then all I'm doing now, trimming a little bit of bolster. So it's not all nice neat cut edges, it's weathered and I'm doing this by eye. I'm gonna basically work out roughly how long the door is. Two of those. Glue, bead of glue along the bottom and a bit of the side. Quite a lot of glue there, so I'm going to put that on the other bit as well. Stick that across the top. Stick that across the bottom. Take my balsa now. I am going to need a second piece. Roughly work out how long that needs to be there. Cut glue, which is now conveniently on the cutting board, so I'm just going to run. <laughs> that didn't go very well. Uh, run my bolster through it. Stick that on one side. Do that again. One more piece of bolster with here. Gets in. Chamfer off the edges nicely, nicely. Cut to the right length. There we are. Glue across the bottom. Job done, trap door in place. It could do with a little handle, but there we go. 
Now, I wouldn't necessarily describe myself as a perfectionist, but there are things that you do sometimes when you make models that really, really annoy you. And uh, one of the things that I noticed, and at least one person either on my Facebook page or YouTube channel, I can't remember which, has also noticed, is the fact that in the scribing of all these bricks, one thing I've made a right meal of um, is this lintel over this door, and actually the one over the other side as well, because I put in this line here and this line here, and like a numpty, that has actually ruined the lintel. Uh, if you know anything about lintels, they're supposed to hold up the door. This lintel here will just drop out of the door. So it's a tiny little detail and it shouldn't bother anybody at all because it's only a toy model made out of foam. Um, and, uh, but, and, you know, surely there must be a way of doing something about it. And the way we're going to do something about it is we're going to take a scalpel and cut out the abomination. So the knife goes in over this side over here. Look. Uh, there goes scalpel going in the model. But there are people watching this going, what are you doing, mate? You're cutting up a perfectly good model. And there's me going, no, it's not a perfectly good model. This bit is wrong. So I'm going in that side as well. I can feel the knife going all the way through, all 10 mils of the XPS foam. It's cutting out uh, through there. I'm going to go all the way along here like this. Uh, uh, right along that line. Right where that lintel is. I probably could do with a new scalpel blade. Oh, listen to that hideous noise. There it is, all the way across there like that. Right, and back the other way, just to make sure. Because it offends me. Two stupid little pink lines are offending me. Now we're taking out the offensive lintel. There it is. There it goes. Good. Now... I can't believe we've just done that. Uh, now we're going to measure out a new lintel the right width. Now this piece of XPS foam, about that, and about here. This bit is going to drop out of shot, hang on, there it is. Now we're going to measure it. It's like that, roughly speaking. Okay, good. Uh, drawing that on there, going to take our scalpel. You cut the way through. Do a little tiny bit of weathering, chop a little bit out, you know. <laughs> then we're going to slide it in. And my friends, if you're watching this and you notice my architectural faux pas, I crave your forgiveness. <clears throat> For now, there is a lintel that will do the job. Let it be known, I shall do it to the same on the other side of the model. And I will be able to hand this model over when it is done, knowing that I didn't make a mess of the doors. I thank you. So that's the end of part three of the Mauve Wall, Red Wall, b, &B Abbey build. I've got to confess, I haven't quite got as much done as I'd like to this week. I haven't got roofs on the cells and the refectory and the kitchen which is what I was really aiming to do but then the roof on the uh, abbey itself was a really big job and I am, am still waiting for more tiles to arrive so I couldn't actually tile the roofs of these buildings if I wanted to at the moment. I am quite pleased with some of this stuff so let's take a quick closer look at where we are at the end of part three um, and then we get an idea of how much I still got left to do on this massive massive commission build. So this is such a big model, this is actually hard to get it all in to the shot in the amount of space that I've got. Uh, I haven't done anything to the Abbott side of the, the uh, build this week. I haven't even got as far as putting the capping stones on. <coughs> the main Abbey model now is pretty much finished, with the exception of uh, having to just do some wooden doors and some um, stonework just inside the bottom of the staircase. Everything else is done. So we've successfully got uh, a roof on the tower. We've successfully got a roof on the building. We've got the tower in place. And although I haven't included it, included it in the video this week because I was filming, oh, I had issues with cameras. I do also have my wooden platform and platforms and ladders at the front of the model 
to get out of the staircase tower up into the main tower. So I'm really happy with all of that. I think that's going to look absolutely terrific when that's on the table. I've had uh, some great experiences using War Base's roof tiles so far. I'm looking forward to the arrival of the rest of the roof tiles um, and that way there I will um, be able to finish off the roofs, which is pretty cool. Do some interesting problem solving as well this week. Uh, this is the the staircase that we've looked at featured in the video. Uh, and then you have to take so many things into account when you're making this kind of models because apart from anything else, I've made my big XPS foam um, rafters that support all the roof. There they are, which is great. All four of those which worked really well, but then I realised I was going to have to cut myself out a big chunk of this wall up here for the rafter to go through for the roof to fit on. So again, those little niggly things as you go along, it's always worth bearing in mind when you're making models that it never goes to plan and you are going to have to adjust and, and, and deal with the things that you encounter as you go along. But um, I'm looking forward to getting to the point where I can start painting this beast. So thanks for joining me then uh, on this huge build. Uh, I'm actually quite pleased with how far I've got with it. On the next video then there are still several things we need to do. I'm hoping that video 4 will be the last part of this particular build. Um, in it then uh, it will have the roofing of uh, this end of the precinct, so the cells, the refectory and the kitchen. I'm not going to bother showing you how I do that because it's done exactly the same way as I'm doing the roof of the uh, main part of the abbey with the tiling and everything else. I've got to make some chimneys yet. The uh, abbot's house needs a chimney, definitely. The kitchens are going to need a chimney. The refectory isn't probably going to have a chimney because I think I'm going to model uh, a fire pit in the middle of the refectory, a big open fire in there, rather than having a fireplace, which might be quite neat. Um, the One of the main features of the next video is going to be um, a whole focus on working with balsa wood. I've got to make doors for this model. Um, there's one, two, three, four... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, it's about, geez, it's about 17 balsa wood doors I'm going to have to make, um, so we'll have a look at using balsa wood there, and I'm also going to make the cloister that goes around this too, and I've got to do the formal garden and the vegetable garden, and I've got to paint it. You know there might be two more videos to come with this, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, um, if there's one more video or two more videos, it doesn't matter. Uh, you won't get to see them if you haven't subscribed. So please do make sure you subscribe to this channel and make sure you get to see the end of this epic fantasy build. Remember, this model I'm aiming to be used for pretty much anything, not just for Burrows and Badgers, but for most Northern European games from, I don't know, about the 12th century onwards, really. It wouldn't look out of place with Robin Hood running around it. It won't look out of place with Three Musketeers running around it. It wouldn't look right out of place with Napoleonic soldiers or troops from the First World War. I'm hoping it's going to get a lot of use, this model. It's a big model to commission uh, and have build and then only get used every once in a while. So, uh, if you want to see the end of this build, make sure you subscribe. Um, if you want to uh, tell me how you think I'm doing, or if you've got hints and tips for use of XPS foam or, or war bases roofs or anything else, then please do leave a comment down below. If you want to be as picky as the guy who got at me about my lintels, and I've changed my lintels, then also please leave comments down below. Um, and Because uh, I, I love to read them. I love to see what you make of, of everything that I'm doing. Uh, aside from that, I'm hoping that I'm going to get this model done fairly soon because I've got other projects I want to get on with. I want to make uh, Shire scenery for Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. I want to make Lake Town scenery for Lord of the Rings Stroke The Hobbit. What's that? Middle Earth strategy battle game. I'm itching to be making some stuff for Judge Dredd and I've got a load of things that I want to get back to for making for the sump in Necromunda. I've got several boats that need doing. I also I'm probably going to get on and finish some Star Wars Legion stuff that I started a long time ago too. So I've got a whole load of different models that I need doing, so I need to get Movewall finished. So, to keep up to date, make sure you subscribe, go and check out my Facebook page. Thanks very much for watching Magrathia Builder of the Worlds. I will see you next time.